It's my knife collection box. This is where I keep all of my EDC knives and a couple of multi-tools. I'm going to open this box, go through them one by one, assign a nominal rating. Doesn't mean too much, just what I would give the knife out of 10. Uh, on my score, I'll say maybe who it's for and a couple of things about it. Let's get started. With my collection of folding knives and multi-tools only. First up is a Leatherman, Leatherman Surge in a I think it's REI Industries now, Leatherman Surge holder with a belt clip on the back. The holder is held up pretty well. Spring loosens a little bit, but for any average job up a ladder, it is a much preferred way of carrying a Leatherman. Nice, quick draw. Hey, too quick. Um, Leatherman Surge is a great multi-tool. It's got about the complete tool set that you would hope for from a multi-tool. Really well made, really sturdy. Highly recommend the Surge. Next up is the Kershaw Emerson CQC 6K. Uh, sorry, the Leatherman Surge is a 10 out of 10. Uh, this is a tactical knife. Uh, it's got a line, uh, sorry, a frame lock, stainless steel. It's quite heavy. It's designed as a weapon, which can be used for EDC. Uh, not ideal for me. I would assign this blade. This is an 8CR13 MOV. It costs about $60 in Australia. I would give this blade about a 5 out of 10. It has its uses. The uses just don't interest me. This is the Zero Tolerance ZT0909. This is an amazing, big, chunky, well-made pocket knife. Um, that is one of the smoothest, if not the smoothest, flipper opening knives I've ever used. S35 VN steel, G10 handles. The most, about a zero tolerance as a zero tolerance can get these days. I would give that a 10 out of 10 for what it is, as long as you like the big knives. If you don't like the big knives, maybe a 7. I defy you to not enjoy carrying it. Next up, the Benchmade Osborne 940, aluminium, uh, S30V steel, seen some good use, held up really, really well. The steel is particularly well done in this one, keeping a really good edge and being quite durable. This is a 10 out of 10 knife, I think it is. Almost perfect, apart from the price. If your price worries you, I would give it an 8 out of 10. You still get a good knife there for a lot of money though. Next up is the Lion Steel SR2A in red. Uh, this is a slight near tool steel blade. I really like the looks. The looks are divisive. The knife is very, very comfortable in hand when it is open and it carries really well in the pocket thanks to a great pocket clip when it's closed. However, the opening is slow and heavy and the thumb stud hurts your thumb and the rotor block is annoying. I would give this knife a 6 out of 10. Next knife is the Ontario Rat 1, just reviewed. This folder is larger than you thought it would be, than I thought it would be, but it is a brilliant one for the outdoors. A really sure grip, a moderately high, moderate, moderate quality uh, stainless steel AUS 8 blade, full flat grind. This is your outdoor food prep knife slash whittling knife. It is a thing of beauty. It's a very, very good knife. I give this a 9 out of 10. The Benchmade Mini Grip. 5561. Five, this or one of the knives I'll talk about later. Possibly the best new knife of the year so far. The CPM uh, 20 CV steel is what it is called. Yes, it is a fantastic steel with a fantastic handle. A very welcome upgrade to what was already a fantastic knife. Axis lock, super fun to play with. 10 out of 10 for sure. Possibly the best knife of the year. Best new knife. Look, it's a Swiss tool. This is the Swiss tool X. This has got probably a tool set comparable in utility to the Surge. Um, nothing silly that you don't need. You sacrifice the serrated blade for a pair of scissors, which I think is a good trade on a daily day use multi tool. Um, Victorinox main blade, all your basic tools, some really rare ones that you don't see on many other multi tools, such as the chisel and the crate opener, the large, heavy crate opener thing, wherever that is. There we go. Good, good deal. Uh, expensive, but one of the finest made multi-tools. Uh, that's a that's a 10 out of 10. Oh, most of this stuff is. It's all brilliant. Um, Leatherman Skeletal CX, really good everyday carry multi-tool. Does you know it does blade 8 out of 10. It does multi-tool 8 out of 10. 16 out of 10, which translates back into 10 out of 10. Really, really good practical tool. Kaiser V3 Vigor. Really nice little, very simple knife. A little bit bland, perhaps, for some tastes, but it does the basic everyday carry pocket knife really well. Carries very slim, 
super smooth action on this one. Very, very smooth. Rat, rat too quality smooth, perhaps even a little bit smoother. Very, very well done. VG10, G10, really good budget knife. Um, for someone who wants to not spend, say, the 120 that a Delica will cost, but you still want something in a moderately good steel like VG10, uh, spend $75 in Australia on a Kaiser Vigor uh, from the Vanguard range. Really, really good knife, good deal. Cold Steel Mini Recon 1. The knife that has not grown on me like I thought it would. Um, compared to some of these others, it just doesn't feel like it has the sophistication, but sophistication isn't everything. Uh, it is a very, very good cutter, and it is very, very comfy in hand. However, I just do not like the look. I can't get over this black coated blade. And it's funny, I don't mind it on the lawman. I think this looks a bit more of a stocky British weapony knife, even though it is smaller. I haven't quite made up my mind whether I'm going to keep this one or not. I almost sold it a few weeks ago, actually, or a couple of weeks ago. Um, it just didn't quite do it for me, but it's a good good steal for the price. XHP, um, Lionelist G10 handles. It's light, it's good, it's comfortable, it's grippy. They've toned down the G10 a little bit. Still doesn't ride in the pocket fantastically. Don't like how I can see the tang there. Don't really like that at all. Few things to yet decide about the um, Mini Recon. It's a great knife for the price and definitely deserves its place in the sort of trinity of really good knives of that size and about that price. Speaking of which, Spyderco Native 5 in CPM 110V, a very formidable steel, formidable to use and hold an edge, also formidable to sharpen. I've had to have a go at sharpening this since I've used it and I met with moderate success, but it took a while, it really did. Uh, it's one of those knives you want to keep on the strop if you get it in 110V, because that's a tough steel. Um, good knife, good backlock, very basic, very simple. This, this, and the grip, this, this, and the grip till in. Nice, simple, basic knives that really would please anyone if they would have received them as a present. Here's a blast from the past, the Nieto knife, Miguel Nieto. Really, really comfortable. This is more of a folding knife. This is called the Pegasso. No, no, it's called the... Oh, I think it's called the Pegasso. I can't remember. There's about three names on the box. Um, but it's got, it's got sort of a um, very European knife. It's made of like the 440C type steel that most Euro knives are made of. Um, yeah, it's doesn't have a pocket clip. It's a bit more traditional. It's really, really nicely made, but probably just not my cup of tea for everyday carry. And, oh dear, did I ruin that tip on the workshop? I did. What an idiot. Full retard moment there. Sorry about that nice Spanish hunting knife. Next up, next up. It's an Openel. We've all seen these. Everyone's got an Openel. If there's one thing the YouTube knife community needs less than another Openel video, it's another Rat1 video. And i just done another Rat1 video, hadn't I? Whoops. Um, these are really good portable steak knives. Really fantastic for... Anything food related, really, really fine, thin edge, but shaves wood like a champ as well. Really, really easy to sharpen. Easy still to sharpen in the world. Doesn't go as dull as quick as you think it would either. But very traditional, nowhere to quickly open or close it. Sits in the pocket, okay, but just getting a bit dated for my tastes. Just not my cup of tea, no, I was like that, I'm sorry to say. A Leatherman Squirt PS4, an EDC standard. All the tools that you need, nothing you don't, except for maybe the tiny nail file. I don't think anyone needs a tiny nail file, really. I don't know, it's just a bit too tiny. Um, oh, it's not even a nail file, it's a, just an actual file. But everything else is all good on it. It's a really well made little Leatherman tool. Ah, my favourite Victorinox, the Explorer. I'm a sucker for the magnifying glass. I think that's a great little feature and really good for like a camping tinderbox. In fact, that's where it usually rides. What else? <laughs> hey, was this better than a cucumber? I think I concluded that it was not. This is the Bear Grylls folding scout knife. It's squishy. It, the, the rubber feels like it's starting to waste away and leaves a stickiness in your hand. There's just all kinds of wrong going on here. The fact that you can get this for about the same price as you can get uh, this or almost this is ridiculous. Don't buy a Bear Grylls knife. I just keep it around for a token horrible knife on deck. Now, where are we? Ah, a Gerber Crucial. This has seen some work. This has actually seen a lot of work. This is like my beta tool. This is the tool I grab when I need to do something that I would not care if that thing destroyed the tool. And this just keeps coming back for more. Look at that. It's just completely wasted away. Just destroyed it. But, it's held on. This is Gerber of China's finest. It really is. The pliers, not too bad. Pretty fine tipped. Pretty good. Got a knife, got a couple of really awkward drivers in it. It's trying to be the skeletal. 
not doing it so well. Um, the strap cutter would be good. This would be a good tool for a fireman or a policeman or an ambulance officer. Not too bad. But fear not, we're not in the dregs just yet. We've got a couple of good knives still. And we've got a Falkniven U2. Brilliant little knife that is. My classic gentleman's pocket knife of choice. Uh, I'm not quite there with the bone handles. I've sort of made that decision about myself. They're just not for me. And it's fine if they're for you, but I just prefer a touch of modernity to my knives. Modernity. Uh, this has got a 3G blade, really lovely blade still. I've sharpened this. Uh, you know what? I think I've just stropped this knife. As long as I've had it, it's excellent still. It doesn't really see much hard use, but it's cool and it's nice and it rides in the pocket well. It's thin, it weighs nothing. It's like 42 grams or something. Fantastic little traditional folder. It costs you about 100 bucks, but so will a case knife in Australia sometimes. And that's made of surgical steel. This is made of proper powder steel, laminated powder steel. How can you go wrong? And what could be my favorite folding knife of the year? Maybe not the best, but my favorite. Oh, and I've lost the scoring system completely. What a tip. Um, seven, eight, zero, ten, ten, five, seven, nine, Yep, that should be about right. Spyderco Mantra. I think I like and enjoy this knife more than the Griptilian. Probably not a better knife than the Griptilian. This is probably more for everyone, but this knife is for me. I love it. I love that there's a little knack to it. I, I'm not bothered at all by the opening. Um, it's really, really good. And the steel, the M4 steel on this knife, it's otherworldly. It just holds that edge forever. So good, such good stuff. Very well made. Really starting to break in, shoots out like a lightning bolt, carries really well, carries like a Delica, but without those scales that rough up against your hands in the pocket, nice smooth titanium. Could be. It's a front runner for my favourite knife of the year, folding or fixed blade. So, I don't know, at the end of the year gear awards, this will be the one to beat. I really do think so. It's my love of Spyderco with my new love of flippy, cool, technical knives, high speed steels, not a terrible price. Cheaper than a 940. What? Really, really good deal. So let's leave that one open because that is my favorite knife at the moment, I believe. And that is my folding knife collection as it stands. Only knife we're missing. You probably notice if you're a channel regular, the American Lawman. It's at work, on my work stuff. So it's that and the zero tolerance of my work knives. Nice, big, beefy, strong, indestructible knives. Uh, there's a couple of other torches. There's a, <laughs> I remember this, a lead lens of P3. That's a bit of a junk torch now compared to the other ones that are around. Lead lens are really falling behind. What's happened to those guys? There's an Olight S1 Baton, still pretty good. And there's an Olight i3S, which is still very good too. So That's my pocket knife collection. A couple of torches, a couple of multis. Um, oh, if you're wondering where the rebar was, that's in the car. And if you're wondering where the signal was, that's some of my work stuff. Anyway, guys, I hope that was brief enough. Uh, sorry I forgot to score, but those scores should have been retroactive. I'd probably give that about a, I think I missed this one, I'd probably give that about a, you know, it's well made, but it's just not for me, I'd probably give it about four or so, anyway. Alright guys, see you in the next video, next one, guess what, it's fixed blades, see ya.